Good morning, everybody. Had a pretty good sleep. Nice and still nice and brisk. Just how I like it. Um, so Rita's just uh, waking up. Um, we're going to stop at a civilized washroom first at Rita's request. So we're just going to go to a nearby town and do that. Uh, then we're going to make a really quick breakfast. And then we're going to, like I said last night, just see what, what we get up to. Uh, probably do a little more exploring on these uncharted roads. Well, uncharted for us. I would definitely sleep here again. I would camp that 10 out of 10. Really? Now, in the summertime, there's obviously going to be really tall grass here in the summertime. In the summertime, the bug situation is probably going to be worse. So we would need netting and maybe some kind of bug pheromone thing to help out rather than just plain bug spray. But mm -hmm. I would camp this. Definitely. I really like this spot. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I mean, my only concern would be if we get like a grumpy farmer because we do have some farmland nearby. But I mean, That's a we risk. were being quiet. We were keeping our light down. Nobody bothered us. So I, I think as long as we weren't in an area like this, you know, multiple nights in a row, I think we'd be okay. That's pretty much how we treat a lot of the places we go. There's always yeah. a risk that somebody yeah. won't see it as uh, you can't trespass here kind of land. Mm -hmm. And neither of us are really interested in being in more than one, uh, more than one night in one place. Yeah. So works out. Well, I'm going to move the Jackery up front and the camera bag. Um, yeah, once you're ready to go, we'll uh, head into town and then we'll do breakfast and then we'll see where we end up. Awesome. Well, here we are on this beautiful morning as I spin in a dramatic circle. This area here is uh, one of the wreck areas that we found yesterday. So this is all, I believe, crown land. You can see it's a lot of sand. So I think a lot of people come out here on their quads and dirt bikes, uh, mostly ATV stuff. There's really not a lot of turnoffs here for truck campers like ourselves. Uh, there are some outhouses over here, so that's, that's nice. I mean, if we ever did decide we wanted to camp out here, just out in the bush, God's country and my lovely fiance whom I love very very much and I'm not saying that just because we're on camera right now is uh, making some breakfast for us what's on the menu babe well easiest breakfast ever all you need is hot water we're just gonna do some oatmeal and I bought some fresh berries oh, with us. I love oatmeal and berries yeah um, I was looking for wild berry flavored oatmeal but we didn't get any so we've got a combination of the maple brown sugar and apple cinnamon we got four packets all together how much do you usually eat two packets worth you know honestly like if I'm at work because oatmeal is kind of my go-to when I'm at work I usually do like three packets just because you know breakfast mm -hmm. There's this crazy rumor that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, you're not at work. Do you still want three packets this morning? Well, we're both going to be eating, right? Maybe do four. All four? Okay, because yeah. I'm fairly certain I'm only going to eat one packet's worth. I'm oh. just going to share a bowl to uh, okay. save on dishes. Yeah, this area here is just beautiful. Like, I, I would come out and camp here. I don't know if I would come out on a weekend just because people are going to be out on their ATVs. It'd be noisy and uh, all that, but... It looks like a well taken care of area though. Like I'm not even seeing any garbage or anything like that. I mean, they do have a, a trash receptacle back there. There's an established outhouse right behind us. Yeah, I pointed that out already when I was on the camp or when I was going around. So yeah, we're gonna do some breakfast. Not really sure where we're gonna end up. I think we're gonna hit up some roads we didn't hit up yesterday. Like I said, there, there are areas we found yesterday, but we're saving those for future content. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we, what we find. I always love traversing different roads that we haven't been down yet. favorite place to be we are on some random sketchy back road in alberta i say sketchy just because parts of the road are a bit washed out but we're just going around looking to see what else we can find for abandoned property potential camp spots um 
and just not really stopping at anything for too long, but just sussing out spots so we can come spend more individual time with them down the road for future videos. We've got what looks like an abandoned house out that way. And uh, what else do we see down there, Rita? Uh, there's a couple shed-sized buildings, maybe an old sister. No, that's not a sister. That's just some old barrels. There are some modern uh, grain... Ele no, not grain elevators. What are they called? Grain silos here. Um, so let's just see if there's an actual modern house farther into the bush, which would make this a no-no. It looks like we've got an access road. Yeah. That sometimes you see something and you're like, oh, that looks great. And then you come up to an access road and realize somebody actually lives there. Yeah. I see modern silos, but the buildings are definitely not modern. Not by any wow. stretch of the imagination. This might just be used as somebody's storage location yeah. and they just never cleared the abandoned stuff off. This is a beauty. Look at this. People have been using this for a turnaround. You can see the tracks in the grass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would camp here. Oh, yeah. We're not going to camp here right now, but... Oh, look, there's more stuff in the... Oh, wow. Okay, so wow. one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I think there's 12 buildings here, possibly more. Might need like a, we might need a good chunk of an afternoon one of these days to come back and check all this out. So, um... Yeah, the, look, there's a well. Oh, cool. I need to get out and take some pictures. These back roads that we're on right now... I don't think we've ever had this big of a gold mine. Like this has got to be the, if we count all the areas, we found like 11 areas yesterday. We camped in one of them. So this is area number 12. Yeah. Um, not too sure how much I would camp this one because that is a cultivated field right there that kind of reaches into the space here. So off season maybe, but during actual harvest season, maybe not. But I definitely want to come back here and check out each and every building thoroughly with a camera and a flashlight. <laughs> I feel like I'd camp it. You just want to be gone early. Yeah. You didn't want to, wouldn't want to linger for too long. Keep your light down. Keep your noise level down. Eh. Again, there's no signs. That's always my argument. There's no signs. Yeah. building here it is completely securely boarded up my theory is that it used to be a rec center since we're just across the street from a ukrainian church but uh with how securely it's boarded up it's obvious that somebody's trying to make sure that it isn't ransacked or anything by vandals the beauty of these kinds of finds is that we can just pop out have a look take some photos some close-ups and then we can move on and explore the rest of this countryside just enjoying what nature has done to this place without vandals tearing up the inside. It's, it's really nice just to see how people still in their own way are trying to take care of their history. There's another one. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of buildings on this property here. We're not driving for like five minutes and we're finding something. This whole area is a gold mine. As I've said, if you see small private farms, you'll find small, private, old homesteads. It's when you find those giant monoculture fields that you might not see anything. I just saw the glint off the rooftop of this one. There we go. Opa! Hello, little guy. A vole or something ran in there. This door's just swung open on this side. Honestly, I smell horses. Ah, with the wires kind of spread out in between. It's probably just to make sure that the walls don't fall in. But yeah, just some chaffed grain that's been blown in. I'd camp that. There's uh, this random pull-off. If you, Just into the bush. If you see a relatively overgrown access road and thick trees, usually means something. 
Okay, well, let's uh, go for a little drive. Hopefully, we don't just end up in somebody's field. That's a that's a possibility. Oh. oh! How do we keep finding all this stuff? <laughs> this is like being in Vegas and just striking gold. I mean, depending how you look at it. <laughs> wow. Do you want to just keep driving? Well, yeah, I want to uh, hop out to take some pictures, but let's just see how far the road goes. You can tell somebody's used it. The grass is squashed, yeah. so it might still be an access road to somebody's feet. <laughs> well, Dustin, there's an abandoned tr pickup truck. No, wait, is that abandoned? No, uh, it's, it's got a license plate, it's, but it's... Uh, the windshield is very smashed. So this does go out to somebody's field. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Yeah, and there's something over to, to my side here, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. I don't know that I would spend a lot of time here just because it is on the edge of someone's field, but there are no signs. Fair mm -hmm. game. Our exploration for today has come to an end, but we have a laundry list of places to check out, some of which we shared with you in this video, but we've got some others that'll be future roadside finds, maybe even future camping videos, some of them. So we got to head back home because so we got to get back to our, uh, our jobs tomorrow. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. It's always great to have you folks join us for our adventures, and we will see you next time.